One June day on a country road, we drive upon an ex-orchard chopped down and drying in the 100 degree plus California sun. What's this all about? I'm your host, Jamie Zachary Fox. Up close, sure looks like walnuts. Going aloft, we see thousands of dying ex-trees spread across the land. Five weeks on, 102 degrees Fahrenheit today here in Winters, California, at the northern side of California's Great Central Valley. We move on three and a half weeks later. It's a balmy day, about 86 degrees. Small green growths have appeared throughout the felled orchard. Five weeks further on, mid-90s temperatures, with neither irrigation nor rain, more green growths are at the stumps. There's apparent machine activity in the southwest quadrant. Dry trees are now gathered into large piles. Rows of roots have been extracted. Thousands of trees remain. But work has begun on gathering the trees and clearing the land. About a week later, from 120 feet aloft, Many trees still lying around. In the southwest quadrant, more trees are being gathered into piles. Many roots remain. We've moved on another week. In the southwest quadrant, trees have been drawn into huge pyres. Roots are being extracted. Green bushes are soon to be gone, and walnut pyres are drying in the California sun. Extracted roots are in rows and drying there as well. Moving three weeks, Just before Halloween, we see the west half of the orchard's trees are now in piles. Over 30 such piles are visible from this vantage of around 130 feet aloft. Flying south, all trees are in piles on the west side. Eleven days later, a dozen or so pyres of dry trees have been burning for hours. The fires have been spaced out. Not all piles are ablaze. Where the fires have been, they're either burning down or already just ash. Good to remember, ash provides beneficial nutrients for the soil when they're plowed under. Some piles are truly ablaze, whilst others are down to just a few branches, or just heaps of smoldering ash. All fires are raging in their drawn-up ponds. Now, from a higher elevation, look closely and you'll see the fire line is in accord with the prevailing wind. Now, a lower view of a pyre burned down to the branches. You'll see the same thing across this land. Another week or so, ash heaps are evident. Bearing northwest, most of the pyres were torched. All the fallen trees on the north side remain scattered. Flying southward over the southwestern area, numerous pyres remain, despite many have been burned. Nine days later, from the vantage of 300 feet aloft, many of the tree piles on the eastern side are now ash. Some on the western side, some pyres, many ash heaps and rows and rows of roots await attention. Heading west, some of the trees in the southwest area await stacking, and roots in the western part also await being put into piles. Week and a half later, from 300 foot in the air, the western side has a dozen or so pyres. From 120 feet above, heading eastward, the trees look moved into piles. Various ash piles remain around the former orchard, interspersed with tree piles and rows of roots just waiting to be gathered up. A week later, the pyres look the same. Flying northward, the machines are still. Perhaps they're waiting for drier times. Another seven days, there's been more rains. The western side of the orchard is filled with sunken vehicle tracks across saturated land. Ten more days, things look pretty much the same. Note the glint and the glisten. The ground remains saturated. Standing pools of water are everywhere. And there's the beautiful north coast range of the Pacific Mountain System right ahead. Two more weeks. Change is hardly noticeable. Heading south, many damp pyres await ignition and roots remain in rows. The ash has been washed away, leaving burn marks. As a view turns from south to east, tree pyres on the higher ground await ignition. As this is drier ground, it may be imminent. Two more weeks, lush green from the rains. Whilst tracking the equipment could make about, operating them safely and efficiently becomes difficult for wheeled fuel trucks or first aid vehicles. 
The needed rain has slowed progress to an ill. Pyres on the eastern side appear to be drying and ready for ignition. One more week. The wetness follows the terrain. It's wetter on the west than the east. Numerous pyres remain here. Heading north, it's drier. Across Poudre Creek Road, trees are being piled up. A week and a half later, and the damp, chill weather lingers. The land remains dotted by walnut pyres. With a wet ground, more roots are being extracted. On the north side, trees are in piles, and extracted roots are all in rows, waiting their turn to be bundled into pyres. Roughly two weeks later, tree piles on the northern side continue to dry. Roots are in rows, waiting to be gathered, and eventually torched. Nine days further on, the ground continues to dry out. The fires are once again burning the walnut pyres on the south side. Roots have been gathered into piles, awaiting their own ignition. Swinging around, the land is looking cleaner all the time. On the north side, all trees are in piles and about one half the roots are now gathered. Three more days. Pyres of roots are gathered on the south side, still some smoldering or ash heaps. Pyres of both trees and roots on the north section, and coming around for another view, we see many ash heaps, and the remaining roots are in pyres. There's not much left to burn here. All the trees are gone. On the north side of Poudre Creek Road, trees are awaiting ignition, and all the roots are gathered into piles. Another nine days. The pistachio orchard to the east is in full bloom. The walnut orchard to its south just starting to sprout leaves. Numerous root piles are now ash. A dozen or so root pyres remain in the southwest sector. More and more of the pyres on the south side are gone, and remnants of the many ash heaps are seen below. The general area continues getting cleaned up. Heading northwest, there's a dozen or so piles ready to go. Other spots are smoldering. On the northern side, three tree pyres are now ash. Five weeks later, most pyres on the south are now ash heaps. Some previously burned piles have had their cinders and stubs gathered into new pyres. Ground has become quite dry and machine tracks aren't as deep. Many of the previous ash piles are tidied up or are gone. Turning eastward, Large ash areas are evident. Tracks reveal where the land's have been worked and is now quite clean. Perhaps two dozen root piles remain. Several appear to be cinder piles. They'll likely be combined. Looking north, all but two of the tree pyres have been torched by now. Another week. Nearly all the pyres are now burned. Some root cinders and stubs remain in the middle of the burn piles. They'll be gathered together, now drier and torched again. The land is quite clean, both on the north and south sides of Poudre Creek Road. Heading east, little remains to be disposed of, aside from some root cinders that need to be reburned and a few ash heaps remaining to be cleaned up. We wait another three weeks. Most of the ash has been gathered and cleaned up by being mixed with dirt. Tracks are evident from collecting the cinders and stubs into a few new piles. The big machines are gone from the site, and the land is mostly barren. Not much work remains. Ticking off another 17 days, the land is quite clean. An orchard of thousands of trees stood here a year ago. Now the land awaits what's ever next. So that's the story of the orchard removal over the course of a year. What began with thousands of felled trees went through a drying period, a gathering period, then a burning period. Thank you for viewing. I'm Jamie Zachary Fox.